The discriminant is this part right here in the quadratic formula, the b squared minus 4ac. So without doing the entire quadratic formula, you can zero in just on this quantity here, b squared minus 4ac without the square root, and you can find out the nature of the roots or the number of solutions that the quadratic formula will have. And so the way you would do that is you calculate what b squared minus 4ac is, okay, and just keep in mind that this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So the a is the coefficient in front of the x squared term, the b is the coefficient in front of the x term, and then the c is the constant. Make sure everything's on one side and it's set equal to zero. But when you calculate this, if it's greater than zero, meaning that it's positive, you would then want to evaluate is it a perfect square, like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, if it is, then you're gonna have two real rational solutions. If it's not a perfect square, you're gonna have two real solutions, but they're gonna be irrational, meaning like square roots that you can't simplify, like square root of 17 or square root of 21. Now, if it comes out to zero, you just get one real solution. And the reason is, is if this is zero, whether you add zero or you subtract zero, this quantity is you know, canceling out, you're just gonna have b over 2a. Now, this is called a uh, repeated root, okay, and what that means is that if you were to factor the quadratic, you would get the same solution twice, okay? And then the third case is that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, meaning it's negative. This quantity underneath the square root would be negative. When you take the square root of a negative number, that's where you get the imaginary solutions, or what they call the complex solutions, and you're gonna get two of those negative b plus that quantity, negative b minus that quantity. So let's get right into these examples and we'll take a look at how it works. So in this example, you can see that a is one, b is positive five, and c is four. So if we do our b squared minus four ac, what do we get? b squared is five squared, which is 25, minus four times a, which is one, times four, which is the c value. So this comes out to 25 minus 16, which equals nine, and you can see that nine is greater than zero, it's positive, and it's a perfect square, so we get two real rational solutions. Okay, so now we're not actually solving for what the solutions are at this point, we're just figuring out what's the type of solution and how many. Okay, so the next example, we've got b squared minus four ac. Okay, so let's write that down. So b squared would be negative six squared minus four times a, which is one, okay, times c, which is one, and you get 36 minus four, which is 32. Now notice that 32 is positive, meaning greater than zero, but it's not a perfect square, so we're getting two real, but they're irrational solutions. So two of them, but irrational. This one here, we've got b squared, which is four squared, minus four times a times c, which gives us 16 minus 16, which equals zero. So you can see here, that's this case here, we have one real solution, but it's a repeated solution. What that means is that if you were to graph this parabola, okay, this isn't the exact graph, but basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna touch the x uh, axis just at one point, and that point's gonna be the vertex. Okay, so then the last case here, we're gonna do b squared minus 4ac again, so two squared minus four times three times two, that's four minus uh, 24 which gives us a negative 20. Now notice this is less than zero. That's this last case here, which means that we're gonna get two imaginary solutions or what you could call complex solutions.